Hi again. Today we're going to have a look at Aperture because I really want to get you understanding this. It really is the fundamentals, the Aperture, the uh, shutter speed and the ISO levels that make up the exposure of the photos that you take. And it will just take you from um, you know, sticking this on an automatic, haven't I got a clue what's going on and totally guessing every time to just see if that's going to come out, to actually understanding the settings that you're putting in. And um, so let's start with Aperture because actually um, this is really where, this, this is the key part of it. Now when we talk about aperture, it's not just a photog photographic term, is it? Aperture is talking about a hole or a space that um, something's passing through. And um, in this case, what it is, it's actually the, the space in your lens that is letting light come through it and hit the sensor at the back. In the old days with a film camera, your film would have been sitting here, but now you've got a digital sensor that, sensor that sits in the same place. Um, and exactly the same thing is happening, is that it's letting light through. And um, when we're controlling the aperture, we're just making that hole wider or tighter. And as you can imagine, the, the wider that is, the more light is traveling through it. And the tighter that is, less light is coming through. I'll take a couple of photos now in the garden just to show you the same photo with a wide open aperture and a tight aperture. Now, aperture on a camera is measured in f-stops. You will see on the display on the top uh, that it will give you a value, usually a decimal point, um, as opposed to the shutter speed, which we'll come to in the next video. But um, So we're talking about aperture now, and you're looking at that. That's the setting on here. Um, this one at the minute is on 3.5, for instance. And I'll show you on a chart just exactly what that means, but you'll see that the lower that number gets, the wider the space is, which means more light is coming through. The higher that number is, I'm just tightening up that hole and I'm making it smaller and smaller. Let me try to visually demonstrate how this works with aperture and letting light through. Now I've got here an old milk carton and I've just pierced a hole in the top. Now this is my aperture. This is the amount of water that is gonna come through here it is regulated by that size, yeah? We're gonna fill up this glass. This is going to take me a long time to fill this glass up with that tiny hole. Okay, so the light is the same, the water is the same. Um, the amount I'm trying to get through it really is dependent on how big this is. I take that off and in effect what I'm doing is I'm opening up that aperture space. Look how much easier, how much quicker that is. Okay, so that's a simple illustration of what Aperture is doing. We're, we're opening up a space to determine how much light comes through and not only how much is coming through, but how quickly that is able to get through. Just like we've just seen with the water, the wider that is, the quicker that light can flood in, the smaller it is, it's gonna take longer for the same amount of light to get through. Now this takes us on to shutter speed because this is the next pillar of the three, uh, Aperture, shutter speed and ISO. The shutter speed and aperture are the two that really go side by side. So the wider I open up my aperture, the slower I make the shutter speed. Okay, I make that aperture smaller, so less light gets get through, and I need to lengthen the amount of time that that shutter is open. So shutter speed is literally that. It is just that click uh, of letting light through. You can have it on um, you know, a thousandth of a second or it can stay open for 10 seconds. Um, a lot of the night shots that you see, the scenes of the sky when the stars are moving or the trails, if you've ever seen any of those where people stand on a bridge and see the cars coming through, what they're doing is they've got that on a tripod and they've opened the camera up, the lens, for maybe a second and then closed it and you see all that blur movement through that time. So that's the other, you can come back to our jug of water here. Um, for me to get the same amount, if I want to fill this glass, uh, we're going to run out of water in a minute, let's say how I fill the glass, okay? Very quick for me to do that. At least we're watering the plants at the same time. Okay, tighten up the aperture, less light coming through. Look how much longer that's taking. Do you get the point? We're not a fraction of the way there yet. 
So the same is happening. This is the same balance. We want the same amount of water in here. And depending on the size of the hole, the time it takes um, needs to be balanced up to get that same amount through. And that's exactly what we're doing with light. And hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Now, just to explain that, let me show you this, you see. If we hadn't got a shutter speed, if our shutter speed was fixed, fixed and the same amount of time applied to both, then the time that I'd got that open with the little drip, what happens if I do this and I'm pulling away? It's just flooding through. And that's exactly what happens with our light. That's why we get these blown out pictures that are totally white. You look at the back of the camera and think, hello Bella. <laughs> you look at the back of the camera and think, where did all this come from? What have I done wrong? And the same when it's totally black. You've had it open too quick and you haven't allowed enough light through. So hopefully that um, might just mean a little something to you. Now this video is um, less about how to set your camera up. This is more understanding what is going on inside your camera with the aperture and the shutter speed. So I'd encourage you to have a look on the site. I've tried to go through um, different cameras. I'm actually interviewing people and um, taking hold of their kit and having a play with it, showing how to set things up. Dials are all different on these. Um, I think they'll be very much Canon and Nikon because they are the two most popular brands but if friends have got other ones, then I'll have a look at those. Uh, so hopefully I'll build up a resource on this site of different cameras that you can have a look at at the different settings. Uh, so that isn't going to be on this post, but there should be links again on the blog post uh, to, to go off to the different cameras. So this is more the theory. This is getting our heads around what and why. Um, list on there as well the different scenarios, um, when you would choose shutter speed priority, when you would choose aperture priority, just to try and get you thinking, right, I'm in this scenario, I'm taking a photo at a birthday party. Does shutter speed matter or does aperture matter? Okay, so you're just starting to think through this and um, I'd encourage you to get out and play with your camera and uh, don't leave it till the minute. You know, if you've got a wedding come up that you wanna take some nice pictures at, uh, not suggesting that you're the official photographer, but if you're just there and you think, hey, this would be great, well, why don't you get out with the kids in the garden before then and actually have a play at this? And, um, you know, no one's looking, no one cares if you get a few deaf photos. Um, if you want to send them in, then please do so and let us have a look at them. I can see all the settings and we'd be very happy to give you some feedback on where I think you could speed up the process of getting the right exposure.